Okay, so what we are going to do now is to use a Jupyter Notebook, uh, essentially with the same problem as we have discussed before, the, the RAP problem, where we have uh, three, uh, three jobs, tester, Java developer, and architect. We have three resources, Carlos, Joe, and Monica. We have the matching scores, but now we also have um, constraints related to uh, having a fixed cost of assigning a resource to a job. So essentially the, formula the, the formulation is, is, is basically the same, except that we will need to add uh, new variables and, um, and, and new constraints. So um, we, again, we will start importing the Gurobi uh, Python uh, library. We will define our list of resources and list of jobs. Then uh, for each resource and tester combination, we are going to have two parameters now. Uh, we have the parameter related to the matching score, as, as in the past, but now we will have the cost of assigning the resource to a job. So for example, for Carlos, as a tester, uh, the matching score is 53, and the, um, the cost of assigning Carlos to a tester job is $1,000. And for the other jobs, it's the same thing. We have the matching score and $1,000 for assigning Carlos. For assigning Joe to a tester, Java developer or architect job, uh, the cost will be $2,000. And for assigning Monica to any of the jobs will be $3,000. So see, the, uh, this, this multi-dig function is quite versatile. So we, we have our keys, we represent resources and jobs. Now we have matching scores and also the cost of assigning a resource to, to a job. And uh, again, um, we, we have a new parameter that defines the budget. So we have assumed that our budget is $5,000. So as I mentioned before, uh, with $5,000, we, we are not going to be able to assign the three resources because assigning the three resources will cost us uh, $1,000 for Joe, $2,000 for, uh, no, $1,000 for Carlos, $2,000 for Joe, and $3,000 for uh, Monica. So assigning the three will cost us $6,000. So now the model needs to decide which resources we are going to assign. And again, we, de we, de we define our model uh, object M that will capture decision variables, constraints, and objective function, same as before. We have um, uh, as before, we, we, we define our decision variable, variables uh, using the adverse uh, method, and the ad adverse method is defined over the combination of resources and jobs. And the name of the variables is going to be assigned, and the object that will capture all the decision variables are the var variables. And notice something, uh, we are not using uh, we are not telling Gurobi that the decision variable need to be binary. Uh, at this point, the default value of a variable when you don't define it is to be continuous and non-zero. Later on, we are going to define it uh, using the uh, binary type. But at this point, we define the variable as before. It can be continuous. And then we are, we are going to add a new variable that we are going to call it the gap. And this variable, uh, the keys of this variable or the index are going to be the set of jobs. And the idea of having this uh, extra variable that, uh, is that it is possible that now we might not be able to satisfy all the jobs. Why? Because we have a limited budget. So it is possible that some of the jobs uh, cannot be fulfilled. So that's why we need this gap variable to capture that we are not filling a job. So in, in terms of the previous equation, consider the constraint tester. And in, in the past, a tester job could be filled by Carlos uh, in this one, by Joe in, in within this two, or by Monica within this three. And now we will add this gap variable, meaning that it, 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 it may be that this particular job is, is, is not filled similar to the, to the other uh, jobs. And how 
uh, we define the, the job constraints uh, in this new situation. So again, we, we, we use the add constraints method and we will use the exon method to capture the summation of all the variables associated to the job that we want to fill. So we want to identify with this exon um, method the resource that can fill that job. But since we don't have uh, unlimited budget, it is possible that we might not be able to fill that job and that's why we are adding to this constraint uh, a new variable that is called gap that allows you to, to capture that when we don't fill a, a, a job, uh, this, this, this gap variable is going to take the value of one. And all these uh, constraints are going to be captured in the object uh, of the model uh, uh, M uh, called jobs. And the resource constraints are going to be exactly the same. So we, for each resource, we want to identify which type of job can be allocated to a job and we are saying that it's possible that we may not assign all the jobs as before, so that's why this constraint is less or equal to, to one. And now we have the, the budget constraint. So the budget constraint basically is, is, is uh, each variable is, is zero or one. So here we are deciding if we assign a resource R to a job J and then we multiply the decision variable by by the cost of assigning the variable and we are going to take the summation over all possible combinations of resources and jobs and all these combinations should be less than equal to the budget and in terms of the code that we have we are going to use uh, the method add constraint uh, we are missing the s meaning that we are just adding one single constraint and this single constraint uh, is going to be captured in the object budget. And in this particular case, we are going to use the X product method. And this product uh, method is going to be defined over the parameter uh, cost, which relates the cost of assigning the resource to a job. So essentially what we are doing is taking from the table of costs and from the table of decision variables and we are multiplying each element in the cost table uh, with each element in the um, assignment uh, decision variables and we are going to take the summation of all of that and that summation is expressed by the x dot uh, product um, function defined of the defined at the uh, parameters of fixed cost of assignment of the resource to jobs and this should be less or equal than the budget and this uh, constraint is going to be called budget. The objective function is going to be very similar as before so with the xprod uh, method defined over the matching scores we are going to get all the matching scores that uh, we can have when we assign a resource to a job but now we are going to heavily penalize when we don't satisfy a job. And for that purpose, we are going to take the summation of all the gap variables that we have defined over the jobs, and we are, we are going to assign a penalty, which is going to be very high, such a way that we disincentivize uh, the possibility of not filling a job. So now the objective function will have two types of summations. One related to maximizing the matching scores and the other part of, of, of the summation will be to penalizing having gaps. And again, the second parameter is the GRB maximize uh, argument that tells Gurobi that we want to maximize this function. And we have the right function that uh, we, can, we can print the model in, uh, and see that we have the right formulation and it's going to be called rp3.lp and then we can, we can run the optimizer given this definition. So the critical part here is that we have defined a, a, a new objective function, a, a new uh, constraint related to the budget. We have defined uh, new decision variables that allows to have gaps and not filling jobs and the most important thing is that um, we 
we have defined uh, uh, the, the decision variable of assigning a resource to a job. Um, those decision variables are assumed to be continuous and non-negative. Uh, non so we are not requesting to be binary. But with this new constraint, let's see what happened. So let's run uh, the optimizer now and see what happened with the formulation using continuous non-negative uh, variables uh, and adding this constraint, this budget constraint. So this is the solution. Assign, Carlos has been assigned as a tester, one. Joe has been assigned as an architect uh, and the value is one. And oops, Monica is partially assigned to the Java developer job. And also the gap is just a percentage of that. So now, Gurobi say, hey, you didn't tell me that <laughs> this needs to be binary. Uh, this is the best solution if you don't tell me that the, the variables need to be binary. So this is a case that we have destroyed this beautiful uh, structure that resource assignment uh, uh, problem has that allows you to have integer solutions and use linear programming to solve the problem. But with the budget constraints, we have destroyed that structure and now the optimal solution is fractional. So now what we need to do is to tell Gurobi, hey, wait a second, wait a second. We need to impose uh, that the variables are binary. So let me comment when the variable is, is continuous and let's add a, a new definition of the um, uh, uh, assignment variables. So this new definition is the same as before, except that now we have an argument called variable type. And the variable type that we are defining here is the GRB binary. So now we are telling Gurobi, hey, be careful, Gurobi. Uh, when you are using linear programming, uh, make sure that uh, the, the, um, the decision variables are binary. So uh, now Gurobi is going to use special methods here that are based on linear programming, but it will ensure that we have a binary solution. So let's do that. Let's solve now the problem using the Gurobi optimizer, but now the Gurobi optimizer is going to make sure that the solution is binary. And for this purpose, it's going to use a, a, a bunch of methods like the branch and bound method and the cutting plate method that I will explain it before. But again, this, this should be transparent for you as a user. As long as you formulate the prob uh, problem properly and you tell Gurobi what to do, all these powerful algorithms are going to be run behind the scenes. So that's why also the, the log is different from when you solve the, the linear programming and later on in the third the demo that I'm going to, to give, I'm going to explain this log. But at this point, uh, uh, we are not ready to do that. So see, now when we told Gurobi, hey, give me binary solution, boom, now we have binary solutions. Now Gurobi is telling us, hey, assign Joe as a tester, assign Monica as a Java developer, and we only can assign two persons, Joe and Monica. So uh, the, the architect job cannot be filled. So that is going to be a gap, and the gap is one, meaning that we are not filling that job. And the total matching score now is, is 153. So what I have shown you is that the resource assignment uh, LP formulation is enough to give integer solution because of this special property that I explained. But if you destroy that property and you add a new constraint, like the budget constraint, you really need to tell Gurobi, hey, linear programming is not enough. You need to do more. So you need to use special techniques based on linear programming uh, uh, models that guarantees that the, uh, the, the, the value of the variables are binary. So uh, I think uh, with that, we are going to finish this, this demo. And in the next videos, we are going to go a little bit deeper, trying to understand in general what a MIP formulation is, a mixed integer programming problem is. And then we are going to briefly discuss how uh, branch and bound and cutting plane method work to, to give you just an idea of what is happening when Gurobi is solving a, a, a MIP problem, where we, where, we, where we have variables that require to be integrated. Thank you very much, and see you at the next video.